Okay, here's the uh, completed work on the Harbach relay. And I gotta say, this relay isn't a very good quality. I touched this with a soldering iron and it burned a hole in the relay, so it's made from really cheap plastic. It's probably a Chinese retrofit, but anyway, what are you gonna do? Um, here's the two wires that I took off that were on the relay. They're really thick. And those were kind of, I think, binding up the relay from uh, from operating a bit, so. Now I have installed these really thin little uh, desoldering strands and the relay I think is gonna be a little better. You don't wanna have anything that's thick on a moving part as far as a wire. It's gonna constrain the movement. So now we have free movement on this relay and I'm thinking it's gonna work a little better. Okay. So what else have I done to this thing? Um, there was a there was a two UF electrolytic right here. I did put in four non-polarized capacitors. These are dot five six. I put in four of those, and that seems like it's helped the idle current on the uh, finals when they're idling and the linear is keyed. They're not. I'm not getting drifting bias current anymore on the finals with the plate current. There was a um, 20 microfarad here. I put in two Chicom capacitors from Bojack on Amazon, which I bought a bunch of these um, two tens in parallel for 20 UF, and those are 200 micro, 200 micro, 200 volts working voltage. All right, that's about that. Let's get around to the back where the most important mods were done. There was a gentleman in Europe who posted a great treatment of the circuits in these amplifiers, and I happened to luck out and find his stuff yesterday, and this made a huge difference. So there were 33 ohm resistors from here to here, here to here. His mod, and I'm not sure it was a mod, it might have been Heathkit sanctioned, but Everyone says keep these leads as short as possible, so I took a 15 puff capacitor, which is a 1.5 uh, nanofarad, and I moved this as close as I could to the grid, put a very short lead here in so it wouldn't oscillate at VHF frequencies, and I did the same thing here, and it turned the thing on, and it still works, so... And there's a little capacitor here that was added. I just soldered that onto the wire there. So this works the way it is for, I don't want to say neutralizing, but to prevent self-oscillation of the 572Bs. And he was saying that this was good for CETON, S-C-E-T-R, -E Citron, C-E-T-R-O-N tubes. So that's how that worked out. Um, I had little parts over here I took out. Let's see if I can find them. Little parts, little parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here they are. So, so let's 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 go over how that looked. And so when I got this amplifier, it had a burned out. So I guess when I got the amplifier, this was burned out for some reason. I'm not sure why. But this capacitor or this resistor did go right to here. So instead of wire, there was a 33 ohm resistor there. And then I made this 33 ohm here. And I was still getting, well, I was getting the amplifier oscillating under certain conditions on its own, putting out 200 watts of crap. And it did have these uh, 200 puff capacitors, micas. 200 puff micas in here. Anyway, mica capacitor or not, who the hell cares? I just put in my 1500 puff 1.5 nanofarad Chicom capacitors from the great Bojack on Amazon, and that fixed that. So I moved this lug down to make it as short as possible and threw in that capacitor, put in some wires. This stuff's all documented on the YouTube page under a link that some gentleman made. He had, a, I think, a P-call or something. I'm not sure where the P-call is from, but he has a really great treatment on, on this stuff, so that's what I did. 
and the amp seems to be behaving now. I've never touched the input circuitry here. I simply soldered it up a little bit, make sure it was all good, inspect all the connections in here. And that's it. So somebody in the past put this nice connector in here. I'm thankful for that. Um, there was an RCA here. Somebody in the past put the Harbach, I guess the soft start in here so it won't surge. I'm thankful for that. And this little board's important. Um, this little board will cause the amp not to put 150 volts minus into your radio and that will key the radio. So that's nice. Um, this looks new here. I'm not sure what that is. And somebody put the uh, Harbach power supply board in this thing too with new capacitors and diodes. So I'm thankful for that. Anyway, that finishes the amp. Um, I will fire it up and try it again. I hope I don't have to pull it back on the case, but this relay seemed sticky last night and I was talking to somebody and I had to kind of keep clicking it once in a while to get the receiver to work. So I'm hoping that these little wires will, being so flexible, will, will help the situation. This is not a very great relay. I would rather put in a better relay, but we'll see how it works out. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day. And yeah, here's the tag on the on the unit. I guess I can flip it around. How do you like that for a visual effect? Now it's right side up. That's the amp I'm dealing with, okay? Thanks for watching. Have a great day.